Hi there, welcome to the 33rd episode of the Synth Project, where we are building a synth together. Today we will introduce the fourth element of the CV processor, the Glide, which will allow us to create smooth transitions between nodes. Some of you may know the Glide under a different name, like Portamento or Pitch Band, depending on the brand that makes the feature on commercial electronic instruments. But the way it works behind the scenes is basically always the same, forcing the control voltage to smoothly change from one value to another rather than jump directly to it. Let's start right away. The Glide device accepts a control voltage as an input and provides in output the processed control voltage. The processing depends on a timing parameter that can be adjusted through the use of a potentiometer. To increase the range while maintaining enough sensitivity, I have also added a switch that can change the timing range. Let's look at the details with the help of the schematic. The core of the glide circuit is made of the resistors R11 and RP5 and capacitors C5 and C6 that can be included and excluded through the range switch P8. The control voltage input goes to an op-amp connected in a voltage follower configuration, basically a voltage amplifier with gain of 1. This provides a high impedance input forced to 1 meg through resistor R10. I decided to put this resistor so that the input of the op-amp is connected to ground whenever there is no signal to the input device. This prevents leaking of noise toward the power supply. The signal that comes up from pin 7 charges C5 and eventually C6 through resistors R11 and RP5, which is a linear potentiometer that can be used to change the timing constant of the RC circuit. With the switch open, we can obtain a glide effect that goes from about 2.2 milliseconds up to 222 milliseconds. With the closed switch, we can obtain a glide effect that goes from about 24 milliseconds up to 2.44 seconds, thanks to the extra capacitor C6. The signal on top of C5 and C6 is injected into another pump, also in a voltage follower configuration. This way, its high input impedance does not interfere with the charge and discharge cycles of the capacitors. Whenever C5 and C6 are at a voltage lower than the input signal, they will start charging, and the output voltage will gradually increase from the current value of the capacitors to the new value of the input signal, within a time that depends on the RC value. Vice versa, whenever C5 and C6 are at a voltage higher than the input signal, they will start discharging over the output of U2.2, which is at a very low impedance, and therefore the value of the capacitors will decrease from the current value to the new value of the input, and so will the output of the glide circuit. It's a very simple circuit, as you can see, but is capable of creating one of the iconic sound effects of the synthesizers. Let's run some tests in lab to verify the effectiveness of this circuit. Here is the breadboard that we have already used for the previous elements of the CB processor. All the circuits from the previous episodes are still installed on the board. And here is the new circuit for the glide feature. Let's take a closer look to it. This one is a TL072 containing the two op-amps from the schematic. Like the TL074 used in the sample and hold circuit, this one also has JFET at its inputs, and that increases drastically the already high input impedance. All the other components making this circuit have also been installed and connected to each other on the breadboard. Channel 1 probe of the oscilloscope is also already connected to the output pin. The input pin instead is connected to the output of my function generator. The function generator is configured to provide a ladder-shaped signal, going from 0V to plus 10V, and that repeats itself at a frequency of 0.08 Hz. 
The output signal also goes to the second channel of the oscilloscope through a separate cable where we can see it as a blue trace and this way we can compare the input and the output of the circuit. The channel 1 is also visualized in yellow but it is not really visible because the blue trace is superimposed to it. I set it that way so as soon as there is a deviation of the output signal we can see the yellow trace coming out from behind the blue trace. I am now going to move the yellow trace toward the bottom so you can see it appearing underneath the blue trace to make sure it's there. As you can see, right now the yellow shape reflects the blue one because the glide circuitry is set to the maximum speed at the fastest rate and this causes basically a delay of only 2.2 milliseconds which at this scale is not really visible. Let me move back the yellow trace now. Ok, now we should be able to see the yellow trace reappear as soon as the two signals will start to diverge. Once again, the controls of the glide are currently set to the fast rate and the potentiometer is all the way to the left, which means the shortest time or fastest speed. Let's now look at the oscilloscope while I increase the time through the potentiometer. Here, now we can see that we are having some differences between the input and the output signals. The yellow trace is now folding a little behind the blue trace in an exponential shape. Let's now increase the time a little bit more. And the exponential, of course, is more pronounced. Basically, every time the control voltage at the input makes sudden changes, the control voltage at the output takes a little time to reach the same value, and that's because of the glide functionality. So, if the control voltage was controlling a VCO, for example, we would slowly move from one node to the next, going through all the frequencies in between. And this works in both directions, either if we increase the frequencies or we decrease the frequencies. Now let's go to the max of this range. Yeah, and now you can see how the change from one voltage value to the next becomes smoother and smoother. Now I will move the potentiometer all the way back to the left to go back to the maximum speed, but I will switch the range to slow. And so now we have the fastest speed of the slow range, which is a delay of about 24 milliseconds. And we can see its effects on the oscilloscope. Let's now increase the time, which means decreasing the speed of the glide. And note how now we are going so slow that the output cannot even keep the pace of the input anymore, and the input signal changes again before the output has the chance to reach the previous value. Let's now decrease the frequency of the input signal, thus increasing the length of each of the steps in the ladder. Now the output has the time to catch up the input. But, if we increase again the time of the glide, we are back to the condition where the output is not able to catch up anymore with the input. Let's push the time all the way up. Yeah, like this. So now the glide time is about 2.4 seconds, and look what happens. The output falls behind the input more and more, and is never be able to reach the same value as the input. And here you have it. With the glide, basically, we can delay, in a logarithmic fashion, the changes of the output with respect to the input, which will allow us to create many interesting new effects on the synth. So, at this point, we have designed and tested basically all the circuits of the CP processor, with the exception of the LED view meter. This last circuit will be the subject of the new video of the series, followed by the actual construction, installation and test of the whole CV processor module. To avoid missing these episodes and any other future video, please remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and also make sure that you have your notifications enabled. See you soon in the next video, and as usual, happy experiments!